What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's video I'm going to be talking about how to create this cool cracked facade uh, look in Revit. Now I think cracked facades uh, just like this one that we're going to be uh, creating are uh, quite cool, uh, they're a cool design and especially if you incorporate lights as we're going to be doing in this uh, tutorial I think they can look really really amazing. Uh, now I always try to explore uh, interesting things that you can do in Revit, interesting workarounds or just approaches when it comes to creating cool things. Uh, facades are uh, especially cool in my opinion and they're especially important when it comes to the whole overall aesthetic of the building, so that's what we're going to be tackling in today's tutorial. Uh, now before I get into that, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm, and also make sure to subscribe. I make useful Revit tutorials each week, I make multiple tutorials, and also I make some uh, beginner, intermediate, and advanced courses. All of my courses can be found down in the description on my website, balkanarctic.com. And uh, if you're interested in all of my project files, like this facade that we're going to be creating today, and all of the families included, well then check out my Patreon, that's going to be the second link in the description, there I host uh, all of my Revit project files as well as some of those advanced courses. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. Okay, and here we are in Revit, so let's go ahead and open up first a new model. So I'm just going to go here to Models, uh, then go to New, and as you can see, I'm going to choose the Balkan Architect Metric Template. If you're interested in this template, the link uh, to the download file is going to be in the description of this video. So there you can get it. Anyways, let's just click OK and open up Revit. So as soon as Revit opens up, I'm going to keep this really simple. So we want to have some sort of a uh, panel facade and uh, then there we're going to be adding these kind of cracks along the facade. Uh, so for the facade, I'm just going to go here to wall and just use the basic generic 400 millimeter wall. So let's just place one wall here. I think this is enough. So there we go. We have one nice big thick wall and now it's time to create a family that's going to be applied to this uh, wall in order to introduce those cracks. Now I know what you might be thinking, uh, can you use something like wall uh, reveals for that or something like that? Uh, I, I just find these to be very inefficient when it comes to something like this. Uh, they are a nice tool when you want to add some horizontal gaps or reveals uh, or sweeps or some vertical sweeps sweeps, but when you're trying to create something a bit more, dif a bit different, uh, a bit more unique, uh, in that case, you're going to have to find a different solution, as we are going to do in this tutorial. So what we need to do is now create a family which can be applied to this wall here. And that family has to be, of course, either wall-based or face-based. And also it has to be adaptive in some way so we can at least stretch it out enough so we can have different types of, uh, different types of cracks and uh, cracks at the different angles. So we have to have the ability to resize it, to rotate it and to host it on a wall and it has to cut through the host, or in this case, the wall. So what can we do to create such a family? So let's just go here to, fi to file, uh, then go to new, and then let's go to family. Now for the template, this is the most important part. If you mess up here, well, you're not going to get the result that you want. So you want the family to have the ability to be adaptive and also uh, be some sort of a, a hosted family. So uh, one of the first ideas that I had is to create some sort of either a, an adaptive or, or even better for this case, a line-based family. But in that case, we're going to have a problem with cutting our wall using our family. So we have to have a family that template that includes the host inside of the family. So in that case, uh, I found that the best option to go for is uh, going to be a face-based family. Now, of course, if you have any other ideas, please share it in the comment section below. I'm always e eager to learn about new solutions and tactics when it comes to creating Revit uh, models. So anyways, let's go here with face-based and open that up. Uh, so as you can see here, we have a, a little generic model face, and this is what we're going to be cutting up using our family. Uh, so what you want to do uh, uh, now is to create some sort of an adaptive family. So how can we do that? Well, first we need a couple of reference planes. Uh, for that, let's just go here to create, uh, go to reference plane, and let's just create two vertical reference planes. Actually, I can create one and then just use the mirror tool with a pick access option to mirror that around, 
perfect. And there we go, we have the reference planes. Now we want to switch to an elevation, either a left or right elevation to model out the actual opening inside of the wall, the actual crack, so to speak. Uh, so let's go here to left elevation, for example, zoom in a little bit. And because this is supposed to be cutting through our wall, I'm going to go to create and then choose a void form. Uh, now for the form, I suggest you go with the extrusion because, well, it makes most sense and it's easiest one to create. So let's go to extrusion. There we go. Uh, so now we want to model some sort of a gap. So let's say that the opening is going to be, let's say, I don't know, something like uh, one, uh, 200 millimeters. So then uh, we should go 100 millimeters to one side, go down a little bit. And then I just want to go down a, a little bit, maybe like this, like uh, 40 millimeters and then go inside another, let's say 50 millimeters because I want to have an additional gap where I can add lights, which can, well, shine some light uh, on this model. Then I can go down maybe again 40 millimeters and yeah, that's it. Let's hit the escape key a couple of times. Next, we want to select this. Again, go here to mirror with the pick access option and mirror to the other side. Now, you just want to go here to the align tool close it off here and then close it off here as well and then just hit finish. Okay, now once we have this void extrusion created, we want to go back to reference level like this and then you want to attach it to one of these, lock it in place and attach it to the other and then lock it in place as well. Uh, next, we want to go here into the 3D view and inside of the 3D view, what you want to do is just go here to cut geometry, select the host and then select our void. There we go. Now, as you can see, it's creating an opening inside of this uh, host and uh, in the final version, that's going to be the wall. Uh, okay, so once we have this, the next step is to add that <laughs> adaptive or uh, something that can be edited, the parameter, the length parameter, which can be adaptive. So what I'm going to do uh, is just go back to reference level, uh, go here to the dimension tool. You can find it here on the quick access toolbar uh, and down below on the modify toolbar or on the annotate tab so you can choose or you can use the DI shortcut if you want. Anyways, once we have uh, chosen this tool, uh, what you want to do next is go to one side, select, go to the middle and then go here, go up and then hit EQ which is going to equalize these two distances. Next you want to have a new parameter dimension on top like this hit the escape key a couple of times and select that dimension. Now, in order to turn this from a regular dimension into a parameter, uh, we have to go here to label dimension, uh, open up the drop menu. As you can see, we don't really have any uh, parameters for this. So we can go here to create parameter and then we can just call this one, I don't know, length. Okay, now really important, I suggest you go with the instance parameter because this is going to allow us to uh, adjust this a bit more or actually that's going to allow us to have those little uh, drag arrows that are going to make the whole thing a lot easier. Uh, now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, uh, it, you're going to understand it just in a few moments when we load this in. And then let's just click OK. Now, uh, you can load this in as is, and it's going to work perfectly, but what I want to do for this family is to include some light. As you remember from that image, uh, Wait, I can open it up here. So as you can see from this image, you have some lights going through these cracks, which I think is really cool. I think that's what makes this whole facade look so cool. Uh, it's nice with just the cracks, but with the light and the cracks, I think it looks really good. So uh, what I'm going to do uh, to create that light is simply uh, go here to, uh, well, to find a light family. Now, luckily, I already have an LED family that they have created previously uh, in one of my other tutorials on ambient lighting. So that's the family that I'm going to be using. Now, I am just going to load it in because I have it saved on desktop. And if you want to see it, how to create that, I already have a video on that. So uh, just search for ambient lighting and hopefully I'm going to leave a link in the description if I remember. If I don't, <laughs> remind me in the comments. Anyways, uh, let's go here to file and then uh, let's go to open family. And then I think I have it somewhere on my desktop. Here we go. One LED and let's open it up. There we go. This is the family. So basically here I have a simple form just to have something visible. And then I have this huge light source. So I can just load this in. So let's go to load into project and close. Uh, that's going to be family one. Click OK. And now we can place it here. 
Uh, so what I'm uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, let's see, can I place it here just like that? There we go. Let's go to front elevation. Yeah, there we go. Uh, let me see if I can rotate this. I don't think I'm going to be able to, but let's give it a try. Anyways, yeah, it's not going to allow me. So anyways, that's not that big of a problem. So I'm just going to bring it down like this, maybe like that. There we go. And then go back into reference level. So it looks like this. Looks kind of odd with this whole symbol, but that's okay. Now, what you want to do is want to have one on each side. So uh, that's the idea. So what you want to do is basically copy this from here down here. There we go. And if we go into the 3D view, oops, this is the project. Let's go back to the family. There we go. So as you can see, that's going to be visible like this. So it is going to be casting some light out of that. Uh, so uh, I, I like the way this looks currently. So the next thing that they want to do is to make this parametric. So what you want to do or to make it in an array. Uh, so you can do that just by selecting the family, go to array. And then for the array, you want to make it linear, linear, and then you want to go here to move to last. And then for the number, let's go with five for now. And then let's just go all the way to the other side, just like that. There we go. We have a little parametric array. Uh, now, the next thing that you want to do is you want to kind of lock this in place. So uh, basically, you just go here to align, align geometry. There we go. And then you select the reference plane. Then you come here, find that little center line, and then you can lock it. Same thing goes on the other side. So go here, select the reference plane, then that little line locked in place. Perfect. And then you want to repeat the same process on the other side. I know this looks a bit odd. Let's try like this. Okay, that's even worse. So let's go to wireframe. Okay, it can be a bit tricky with these light symbols. But anyways, uh, let's go to array. And again, linear number is going to be five, move to last, and then let's copy it all the way here. Perfect. Go to align, select the reference plane, then find that little symbol. Perfect. Lock it in place. Same thing on the other side. Reference plane, little symbol, lock it in place. Perfect. Uh, next, you want to select the array, just one of these two arrays. Select the array dimension here. So this uh, like number of array. And then you want to go here to label and add a parameter. So this one we can call a number of lights or let's, okay, let's type in that. There we go. And this can also be an instance parameter. Click OK. There we go. And then you want to select the bottom one. And then find that dimension, which is really hard to select. There we go. And then you want to label that one as number of lights as well. Perfect. OK, so once we have all of that uh, adjusted, now we have to add just one more uh, parameter here or one more formula for the parameter. So basically, you want to have a, a lights here on uh, how many uh, uh, millimeters, I guess you can say. So uh, for example, in this case, this is 900 millimeters and we have five lights here. So uh, we can just say that the uh, number of lights is equal to length. So let's just select length, go to control C to copy, go here to formula, go control V. So length divided by, I don't know, 200. There we go. Hit apply. Okay. So basically, if we increase the length, so if we make the length larger, it's going to add uh, lights in between. So it's going to try to give uh, give us one light for every, I don't know, 100 millimeters uh, or something like that, which works really good. Uh, now, of course, keep in mind that this is going to slow down your model a little bit when you're placing everything, uh, but it is going to make it really cool when you uh, when you create some night renderings, but it is going to take a long time to render. Just keep that in mind. So anyways, let's just save this. So let's go here to save and then I can save it on my desktop to, uh, I don't know, cool light crack. There we go. And then we can load it into project. Perfect. Now what you want to do here on the project is go to the 3D view and then you want to place one here. As you can see, this is what it's going to look like. So we have that opening and we have those lights. Now when you select this and you go to one of the elevations like the south elevation, for example, 
Okay, this is the wrong one. Let's try north. There we go. Now, as you can see, we have those little grip points, so we can extend this whole thing. Perfect. So uh, it's going to look a little odd with those lines in the middle, but don't worry about those. Uh, the family goes from here to here. So you can add one uh, like this. Oops. Kind of tricky to select it, but anyways, uh, you create one, then you can copy it perhaps, rotate that like that, maybe make it overlap, go a little bit to the outside. Now, uh, with these lights, it's going to make it a bit tricky when you go kind of towards the outside. Uh, at least one light is going to kind of escape out, so just keep that in mind. It's not a perfect family. So let's go down. There we go. And then you can just continue working like that. So I can select this one, copy it down, maybe rotate it a little bit like that. Oops, I selected the wall. Uh, again, select that, move it here, extend it a little bit further. Perfect. Then select this one, copy. So you just want to have fun with, with this, make it cool, make it interesting. So you can pretty much play around and find whatever suits you best. Maybe go like this and here make it smaller as well. There we go. And then we can copy this one. Oops. Copy. Maybe something like that. I don't know. So I'm just playing around here. Uh, again, you can make your own designs, but the idea is to have this parametric family, which you can then apply everywhere. And then let's extend this one. Perfect. So there you go. When you go inside of the 3D view, this is what that's going to look like. And of course, because we have all of those lights, uh, when you go to level one, Okay, so everything is going on here. Uh, we can go here to default 3D view, uh, go to camera, and then create some view like this. Let's go to the full navigation wheel, look up a little bit. There we go, we can extend it, perhaps. Perhaps add a floor here. I don't know, it looks silly without a floor. So let's add a simple floor. Uh, okay, so let's go back to the 3D view. There we go. And now when I go to render, let's try a night rendering just to see what that would look like. So let's try uh, exterior artificial only screen. Okay, this is going to be a really small rendering, but uh, let's let's go with medium. I don't know. Let's give it a try. Now, of course, keep in mind that this should be really be set to high quality to get the best result. But as you can see, it does light up. But because the, the quality is set to low, that's why we have uh, all of this. So you do have to play around a little bit with the quality setting and with the family and also with the uh, artificial lights. So here you can set up the dimming, for example. So we can set this to or let's select all of these like that to point two, look okay. Now perhaps it's going to be smaller. So you have to play around with that. Of course, again, uh, set up the quality setting and so on and so forth. Here, I'm really trying to give you a quick rendering just to see what we get. But as you can see, we have that gap in the facade and also uh, we have the lights. So that's how I would go about uh, doing something like this. And of course, if you have a better idea, please share it in the comment section below. I always appreciate uh, a new interesting approach when it comes to doing something like this in Revit. Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video, and I'll see you in another Balkan Arctic tutorial in a couple of days. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.